Hi guys, my name is Borodante, and welcome back to Overpain, which means I go through my Patreon page and check out all of your guys' submissions that you sent me during September and see if I can improve something and give you some advice. No sponsor this time, so if you want, check out the merch, the link is in the video description. This is digital art specific merch. Let's start. First patient is Cyver. Hi Cyver, you've got a pretty cool e-girl artwork here. Hello Boro, my name is Cyver. Yeah, I'm from Austria and I think I have been watching your YouTube channel for about a year. I've also watched every single episode of Overpain and I've learned so much. That's really awesome to hear and you're well done. Although I improved a lot, I'm nowhere near I wanna be. I started doing some reference studies so I can broaden my knowledge. Attached is my latest study. I'm not really happy about the hair and face. I wanted her to look Asian, but it doesn't look like that. Furthermore, some other artists pointed out that it's looking a bit fake because I only painted the local color of each element and the artwork is missing the color from the light itself. They also added that I'm missing ambient occlusion, but to be honest, I have no idea what they mean exactly and how to include that. Also, if you're curious, here's the original ref. Alright, Cyber, let's see what we can improve here. Well, in terms of lighting, I can say that it's kind of weird that this lady is obviously standing in the sunlight, but for some reason the light from the sun is as cold as the skylight. There's no transition of colors. And I guess that's what the other artist meant. So we have this cold hue everywhere. Like it jumps around, but it doesn't matter since it's so close to gray. Generally, you have this blue tint in the shadow, this blue tint. But when we go bright, it doesn't really warm up all that much. Although I can see right here, we're touching yellow. Of course, it doesn't mean anything because we're pretty much just white. It's just a little deviation from pure white. So uh, one thing I would say that I don't think that the original photo is actually overexposed, like it has pretty bad damage from the encoding, but generally I can see some different shades of white going on between these parts, uh, these folds on the white cloth. And with that in mind, I'll go ahead and introduce a little bit of uh, like this. Barely noticeable, maybe slightly even more noticeable. Step down from the pure white. Because if we're creating a painting, it, it shouldn't do that. <laughs> it shouldn't be that overexposed, it's not nice. Even when things, like if you want to show something really, really bright, just make an incredibly low contrast in the brights. But don't go for a full white. It's not good for photography, pretty much unacceptable in cinematic color grading and absolutely frowned upon when you are painting. Unless it's like a message of some sorts, like you try to, you know, show that you're supposed to be blinded by something being super bright, but that's like the only possible reason where you should be using that. But if you're painting something closer to oil painting, like a rich fine art, you should let the human eye see all the details, even if they're supposed to look like they're really, really bright. And yeah, I chose the warm color, which will automatically with, uh, you know, bringing back some detail. We're not actually bringing back any detail yet, obviously, but we will in a moment, since we now we'll have certain space to work with. And together with that, I'm also introducing the warm sunlight color on all the bright parts. So I'm only doing this where the cloth is actually facing the sunlight. Like personally, I wouldn't say I would so wanna do that. I don't think it's that bad looking. Like if you want the white part of the outfit to look actually like pure white, you know, with a slightly cold shadow, why not? I think it looks just fine. But saving a certain relative difference between the two light sources, the sky and the sun, still makes sense. No matter how much of a cold, white balance sort of you will choose for your, uh, for your painting, the difference between two lights will remain. Even if everything is cold, the skylight will be even colder than the 
absolutely not warm sunlight. I hope I'm making sense. So yeah, we can go ahead and do the same thing with the face right here. Because you can see in the reference, it's a much more lively sunlit color on the skin. We'll do the hair later. You seem to have changed the color of the hair overall. Like it's not black hair anymore, I think. So let's see if we can squeeze out a bit more. Yeah, like that. The actual sunny, sunny color. I can go with like 100% in here since it's super semi-transparent anyway. So this is the color I've been painting with. But yeah, of course, uh, the best strategy here would be to actually paint with these colors from the start. <laughs> Now, shadows in these little areas, like the falls generally on the surface that is all together facing the sunlight, they shouldn't exactly get cold right away as I'm doing it right now. Maybe just a tiny bit, since there is no direct sunlight in that part and skylight is still as strong as ever, so it makes sense that it would gain some more influence comparing to the sun but at the same time this fold right here has this geometry where it's like going on like this and the sunlight is hitting that part from the like behind of this fold a little bit then bouncing over there and bouncing around like this losing a lot of its brightness but still a lot of sunlight will bounce inside of that fold just because there's so much direct rays going on right around the fold. Contrary to like this area where if it bounces, it bounces somewhere far away. That's literally doing ray tracing in your head a little bit. Yeah, you see as I'm adding a little bit of sunlight on the lip, the bottom lip. We can see in here as well, it's like a bit more orange than the top lip. And we're kind of getting the same effect in here. Because this way it was a bit too pink comparing to this. So yeah, some like that. Now I'll add like a mask, I guess. And I'll be like almost completely erasing the yellowness in some areas that are much more likely to face the sunlight even more than some other parts. This way I'm introducing the details that were completely lost in the overexposed area. Maybe not the best way to do it. Let's just add a color. Yeah, something like that. I wonder what this is. It's like a projected shadow from uh, from this stuff. Because if it is, it's kind of weird because that would imply that this hand is like a cardboard, completely flat. That's the only way. Otherwise, the shadow would literally go away like that. It would fall away like this because this is a cylinder and cylinder is going away really fast. So the shadow will immediately go away like that and that side would be completely in the shadow. So something more like that at least. And that's exactly what the reference is doing, but with a much more complex and strong wrinkle geometry. Also decided to curve down the shadows a little bit, doing it like this, only once. So this way it sort of lowered the exposure of the shadows as well, to introduce these details at the top. And yeah, let's just keep going with this color that's really close to white. So yeah, this is like a really important part, and I feel like anyone who's new generally to you know playing around with the contrast with how things work like this uh, they may really underestimate the importance of details where you know it's it's kind of like all white it still needs to be there all the details need to be there it means it's almost like harder to work with it comparing to something that has like a strong range of contrast because you need to manipulate like very small deviations of values it really needs to be done and maintained at that low contrast not going too strong so you would actually be able to see everything while at the same time it would look like it's actually white and not gray or something 
even if I want to introduce stronger contrast, I need to sort of increase it in the middle right here. But all the dark details, they won't be lost like this, like cut away completely, turned in all black. So to actually illustrate on the image what I meant, the poor kind of contrast looks like this. Or we can increase contrast in the middle, but lower it at the very tops and very bottoms, like this, making sure we don't go flat. And now we have strong contrast, but nothing becomes completely flat. Even this part, it still has these deviations of colors, even though it looks like it's completely flat. You see I'm jumping around on that curve right here. Slightly different values I'm getting. They're still there, not turning into like a completely flat plateau of colors. But we're already at that limit right now, because we're studying this uh, very expressive and high contrast photo. And that's the way this pretty and awesome contrast was made. Just making sure that you compensate the contrast in the center, in the middle, by lowering the contrast at the bottom and at the top. You got it. Yeah, introducing these very high contrast, tiny contact shadows, something that I talk about quite frequently. Um, so to speak, shadows from the immediate neighbors, right? So we can see a little thing right here being like a step up. So it will cast the shadow from the sun. Same thing going on here. This really introduces a lot of photorealistic and very cheap, like it's e easy to do these, like go ahead and like look at things that are immediately next to the surface and cast a little shadow from it with full contrast, meaning in here you see I'm making a strong shadow. It's just small, but it should be pretty strong. In here a little bit of a distance, so in here already a brighter color will show up since this part of the cloth kind of holds this chain in the air. And yeah, on top of that, let's try to make overall the picture colder a bit like this yeah and this way you see the leather in the original it was like gray but in the photo when you look at it it's kind of like cold a little bit and this is just gray it's kind of dead and when i'm making overall the image a bit colder we kind of getting the white closer to not being you know stained yellow but actually turning more into pure white look but the shadows and the leather and other stuff gets relatively even colder than that so like this before and after a bit colder generally i'm seeing a bit of a lack of contrast of lighting on the face like i changed the color of the sunlight but it also should be a lot brighter you see, it's a pretty bright spot on the face right there. Speaking of the head, I feel like a little bit less of the forehead. It needs to be, well, maybe almost like this. Because this is ridiculous. This is my level of forehead. And it's not okay because we're looking at the face from the bottom. And you are kind of having a problem of actually conveying the message that this is a look like this, you know, from the bottom. You can see the difference, right, in the posture. This one stays straight and only looking down on us. And this one is kind of doing this a little bit. That's because we see too much of the forehead, too little of the chin, I would say. This distance is too small comparing to this. So these uh, foreshortening distortions that we would see if the face would really be tilted upwards, they're kind of missing a bit. So there we go, making the whole face noticeably brighter. And yeah, lifting up this area around the eyes. Like, I don't know too much about painting Asian faces, but generally the point of it is that in here we don't have strong folds that go in inwards. So it's like more of a tension of the skin going on in here. It all has a name, I don't remember. And yeah, I I'm keeping the shadow in here as dark as it used to be. And it's getting a lot closer to what the reference looks like, actually. Looking a lot more like actual sunlight. Sunlight gives a bit of a harsh shadows. 
toning down the sky a little bit. Obviously, it's not the point to, you know, perfectly repeat the photo reference, but I feel like it only makes it look better. A darker sky makes the white outfit looks more white. And generally, it's uh, a proper, again, exposure contrast, the difference of brightnesses. A white cloth lit by the sun will be noticeably brighter than the skylight. Not skylight, actual sky. The way it looks. Yeah, let's see what we can do with the forehead now. Yeah, so there we go. That's that's what I have to say. Feels a bit weird to cut off that much head. Almost feels like I may have overdone it a little bit and the truth is somewhere in the middle. But at the same time, it may be just fine. Some sunlight hitting the neck. Otherwise, it feels kind of weird that the color is fully lit by the sun, but not a single bit of sunlight hits the neck. So yeah, this is it. This is the progress. Next patient is Nakras. Hi, Boro. Hi, Nakras. I've been watching your channel for something like four years now, I think. An all-timer, I see. Anyway, I come to you with a gift painting drawing thing I made for one of my friends who just had their birthday of their character who's pretty much a little delinquent anglerfish boy. I wanted him to look like he was floating in the water, and I tried to work on Fresnel effect to make it convincing and give a bit of a water haze to the submerged parts of the character to add depth, but I still feel like the overall thing looks too flat. Maybe the background has something to do with it. I also think the clothes don't look as wet and floaty heavy, depending on if they're in or above the water. And I'm entirely unsure about the light source and shading, I think it looks very muddy. The brushwork could also use some work. I have a hard time balancing hard versus soft edges. But enough rambling, I really appreciate any tips and advice you have to give for me. Postscriptum, the tooth is supposed to be broken, it's part of his design. Alright, Nakres, let's see what you got here. Yeah, I'm actually very excited to see if I'll be able to improve this this idea of the fact that this is the line of the like the water level and everything below needs to be needs to look like it's underwater. Let's see how we can do that. I think the main trick here is to make sure we introduce the reflection on the water because it's just kind of foggy but doesn't really reflect anything. I think I'll look up some references right here and let's see what we can find out. Like over water, I guess, but like this one is close. So immediately we get from like the saturated skin color to like washed out slightly watery color. Mostly because something is being reflected probably. I don't think the water is actually muddy in this case. I don't know if it should be muddy in your case, probably a little bit. It's probably like a river, right? Or something. See, I don't remember if you mentioned that, but it doesn't really matter. Let's go with over water. Oh, there you go. Yeah, you see? <laughs> Immediately a whole bunch of reflections. And the water is super muddy. Oh, there you go. That's it. And more. Cool. I found it. So yeah, water distortion <laughs> is a big deal, by the way. <laughs> of course. We don't have that at all in here. Which is really weird. How is it that the water is completely still? Is he alive? If he is, he's probably you know, causing some disturbance on the surface of the water. So the whole thing needs to be kind of doing all of, all of that action. Of course, another thing is the caustics effect. I still don't know how to pronounce caustics, caustics. But uh, the whole thing with the bright light spots from the distorted surface of the water. And yeah, actually my favorite effect is usually at the very edge of the water. The water at the very edge, it doesn't just end like this, it sort of hugs the surface a little bit. And this part usually results in a stronger reflection right on the edges. 
you kind of did it, but you did it. It feels more like he is reaching to us through some kind of forest field. That's a detail that's sort of important. That's a detail of a contact. Contact between two surfaces. That's where the eye is looking for hints on what, what is it. <laughs> so yeah, let's go ahead and try to implement these ideas. Because the whole haze and lowering the contrast, you nailed that. You kind of feel how this arm is really closer to us than the rest of the body because of this difference in contrast. This is really cool looking, but it's not enough to actually convey that this is actually water. It may as well be just aerial perspective. So yeah, with all that said, I'm gonna listen to some music and see what I can do. And yeah, by the way, the surface that's right next to the line of the water is definitely gonna be a wet surface. It will have small drops of water or just, you know, the bumps on the skin that are covered with water. And they will be adding a lot of these like tiny details. I'm pretty sure, not pretty sure, not seeing any hands in this kind of situation, but Generally, like this, you see, this is underwater, and this is right next to the water, a lot more complex surface, catching a lot more of the micro highlights, that kind of thing, like this, these bumps of little hairs in the water. Right next to the edge of the water in here, there will be a lot of that going on. And I feel like this angle right here is so flat, like in here at least some kind of bump that makes it, you know, more of a solid um, cliff next to the edge of the water. But in here, like a tiniest movement will move the edge of the water a lot because it's so flat, like a beach. And because of that, we'll have a bigger line of that just wet area because it feels really off to keep this very flat part so, you know, sharp, as sharp as in here. It just doesn't look right. Look at that, I just erased the whole glow effect and just a thin, pale, white line between the more of a washed out version and a strong contrast version is already enough for it to look like water. Really cool. Yeah, also another thing, surfaces over the water will be wet and reflective. Surfaces underwater will have no reflective surface. They will be completely matte. That's usually the way things look, unless they're like actually maybe metal or like a um, diamond would shine underwater. But most things that rely with their shininess on having some kind of moisture on the surface, those surfaces become completely matte because the surface of the water is gone. The only way you get surface of the water is if there's air around it that makes that water end somewhere. So yeah, there's that. I think it works. Now I want to try and play around a little bit with the distortion. It feels like a good idea to, you know, actually go ahead and try a little bit of that. But at the same time, you can really apply a filter or like use liquify maybe to achieve a pretty good look, I think. But at the same time, just go ahead and um, start with, you know, breaking down the surfaces next to the islands of where the water ends, because we know the directions of waves in here. A little bit like breaking the continuity of the surfaces. 
It takes some time, trial and error, to figure out how it works. Maybe you look up some references or something. Pretty much you find a consistent line, you break into it, you break out of it here and there, making sure you think about the direction of the ripple, and it should more or less work out, you know. You can go not only like horizontally, but also vertically. So in here, a little bit of skin going over the hair that's deeper, like further away, also works. Sometimes if it's like a big ripple, it may even catch the same highlight as the edge of the water there, sort of connecting the surface with the rest of the water as well. Look at that, really feels like uh, well, the water is going on. Just gotta do it everywhere, so it wouldn't feel kinda off. In here we have waves going on like this, and every time they do this tilt, they're reaching this guy. So every time a wave goes hop over there, over there, catching the highlight from the very bright light source that's right there. So it can get really, really bright. So yeah, as you can see, you just go ahead and cover a lot of the surface with this kind of stuff. Should probably tone it down eventually, like uh, next to the surfaces, it's really tiny ripples and everything, but going further away, they should turn into like more of a calm waves. And that's maybe where Liquify should come into play. Let's see if it can work. So this is too obvious, maybe we can use something more interesting. It should be really, really strong. I mean, this one works, it's just a twist like this, but if you make a line with it, it sort of introduces just a nice kind of a wave. So that's something to maybe apply like this. And yeah, in here we should introduce some of the manual more of a strong ripples, like tiny ones. But everywhere else, it can be these bigger ones. Can as well, you know, manually paint everything. I'm just, I'm not gonna do it. I'm not gonna cover the whole artwork with this. But if you work on your own piece, it's definitely an option. I would probably do it that way. Not to mention that not everything needs to be like strongly distorted or anything. But sometimes you can get into this kind of situation, which is kind of epic. <laughs> but it looks really digital, like it's um, not really a painting anymore. So that kind of strong distortion, it's best to, you know, paint it yourself. Or maybe at first find some kind of good look out of this, but this is like for a super strong splash, I can't even really imagine it to make sense. Maybe on a small scale, you can sort of, yeah, achieve that kind of look, and then sort of paint over it to give it actual brushwork, then it might work pretty well. But yeah, this is one way to do it, or at least to get some sort of base. Of course, you can afterwards, you know, come back and, uh, not come back. You can't come back and fix it. You can get in right now, in the same session of Liquify, to maybe tone down certain parts. And yeah, of course, basic actual moving Liquify like this can totally work as well. The only problem of Liquify, like, you see, when I was doing it manually, I was breaking down the object, and sometimes, like, a little bit of this color would appear detached from the rest of that color. And Liquify really just moves the edge back and forth, and you only get, like, really strong distortion, as I showed before, when you apply a lot of that effect and it looks pretty digital then. 
So yeah, as I said, it's a good base, but then you come in and add this kind of random aisles of uh, colors and at the same time introducing more of um, brushwork of your own so it would actually fit in. So yeah, that's the kind of effect you can achieve here. And with some extra work on top, it will look pretty dope. So yeah, pretty much water effect seems to work. Might still be not super obvious, I would maybe try to increase the ambience or change in brightness. And here I notice, like you see, the skin underwater gets immediately noticeably darker and uh, like very like of this aqua color and other other options as well do that apparently that's one of the effects of the refraction from the water that generally things get a lot darker so yeah i'm guessing this is a pretty good reference for understanding that you can go pretty dark with the water to make it feel a lot more believable and um to make it show more but yeah i guess that's about it Next patient is Roddy Rich. Hi Roddy, hi Boro. I'm Manuel. I'm... I don't know how to pronounce it exactly, I'm just trying not to say manual. Manuel. Manuel. I'm Manuel. And I've been a bit of a shadow supporter until just recently. Well, nice to meet you, Manuel. I've been watching your YouTube for years now and felt like giving back to show my support for your hard work and improving my art. Ha. <laughs> this is my first painting in two years, since this is a painting of a character of mine in the game Star Wars The Old Republic, I included some reference. I took some liberty with the armor, making pieces of it different, like changing the suit color and adding lights or taking some away. I used the reference as a pose reference, then kinda went about painting it without looking at the reference again, probably a bad idea, not really a great idea. I struggle with making it look three-dimensional and getting values right. I also had a lot of difficulty with color selection, making the metal parts look metal, and how the lights I made don't really look like lights. Also struggled with the cloth like hood between the shoulder guards. It doesn't look right at all. Any help or change to the painting is welcome. I'm looking forward to learning a lot from the overpaint. Alright Roddy, well this seems like a lot of fun to do especially if you haven't been painting for a while. Probably was fun to experiment with the looks of your character. Is this like a new game that's the old Republic? Or is it the old one? Like this cloth looks kind of old school, but generally the rendering is pretty modern. I totally think it was a great idea to, uh, you know, start with the reference and then just taking your own liberty to do whatever you want. Why not? I just raised the sketch over here to make it a bit, you know, with the with these sketchy edges or whatever. We'll bring those lights back in, because uh, it's best to re-render them a little bit, as you said. You want it to show the glowing lights more believably, so we'll do that. So your version seems to have some issues with, like, deciding where the light is. I can see some decision at the bottom on the chest, but maybe you were just repeating the only way to show this geometry that you saw. So I'm not sure if that was intentional, like the light from the front top kind of situation. But I'm seeing some rim lighting in here as well. So let's go with these two, but actually, you know, committing to them. So if the light is over here, lighting the character like this, Let's start with this one. We'll have the brightest spot right here on the helmet. That will be the brightest thing. And everything that's curving away from it will already be getting darker. So that's what I start with. I just define the angle of the light and I'll be doing this thing all over the place. Everything that's facing away from the light will be noticeably darker. And something is like halfway there but you know an angle is really strong that's where we get somewhere in the middle so in here we'll have that rim lighting but for now i'm gonna just not have it like at all we'll just work with one light 
and this will be probably this brightness they're like sticking out right from these shoulder guards like this and that would be completely black if there is no rim light so well not completely black like a, a lot darker so let's do the helmet the only thing that's done is the chest right now the chest is shaded properly the only thing is this color is a bit too yellow probably from the glow of the lights that used to be here i'm gonna get rid of that so yeah for the lights all you gotta do is select a strong vibrant color like this for the base and then move like this much closer to white much more yellow and do it this way and then the core can get completely white so yeah the important part is the crown of this glow that needs to be really saturated color they have it very subtle in their rendering you can see that slightly like it's pretty saturated orange on the edges of this yellow and i'm kind of like just emphasizing it like this the yellow also can be more saturated than it looks kind of better and one important thing about making lights look good is that they should be kind of in the shadow <laughs> otherwise they're just gonna be bright and bright and it doesn't look good so that's a good placement for the light we can actually even you know introduce some some lighting from them onto the nearby parts of the outfit like this maybe some wrinkles will show up i don't know maybe oh right there were this kind of stuff maybe that's what i meant <laughs> but this area right here is really like staring at the light i'm just trying to sort of inset it inside as much as i can and then let's just repeat the same stuff the only thing is we can't start with too dark because we can't make like the glow to be darker than what's already around the <laughs> the light and that's what makes the gradient of the glow not that rich and cool So yeah, what's interesting, this kind of metallic outfit, like armor, it's a really good exercise for rendering materials and values and all kinds of stuff. Uh, visualizing hard surface objects, they, they need to be, you know, precise and straight. So uh, this is a pretty hard example you got yourself into, which is totally fine. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Just saying that if it doesn't work right away that's just because it's not an easy task mm. it's an actual line that goes to the end but you changed it let's just go with the whatever you have in your design and yeah i'm actually gonna remove this rim light for now to get that consistent shaded side for now let's make it a bit shinier here so just adding a strong spot like this Generally, um, that's something that I mentioned before, but when you are shading metal, it's actually absolutely everything is reflections. None of it is actual, like, just lighting. It's all just very blurry reflections. That's what gives the metal its deep and special look, because everything is just reflected and then, like, the contrast of lighting is stronger. There's no, like, flat shading all over it. It's getting darker much faster. So yeah, one more light in here. It's on yellow. Let's tone down the brightness of that yellow just a tiny bit. Let's say it's sitting deeper under the surface. And then let's do a little bit of the same old gradient of glow. I'm not gonna be doing like an oval inside of a rectangle, it feels a bit of a unpleasant to me. So I'll stick to this kind of look. Probably makes sense to fill this whole part with this light, like this kind of color. Like really it's again more about the design aspect of it than like rendering. Just a weird 
place and shape for a light. Not place, but the shape. I feel like maybe rounding it a bit would make it feel a bit better. Of course, it doesn't really speak to the rest of the design. I mean, this thing is round right here, but this is a squircle. And this is just some shadow cast like this from the light onto the helmet. Yeah, unless actually I went ahead and added some kind of reflection, like rim, rim reflection on the back. But let's stick to the rule of just having one light source for now, and that would make it look more like this. So if, if these planes like curve away, by the way, if they curve, they should look more like that. So in your design, it kind of thins out like this. Let's keep it that way. So uh, yeah, the wrinkles, really just defining the tension directions, the way they are in here, pretty much. It's a quite an odd shape for, for a cape like that. Like, it's so not realistic in the reference to begin with. But yeah, just making those folds a bit more natural, like maybe bigger a bit, more three-dimensional, because they're really just drawn with a normal map over there. That's a shadow from the head onto the cloth, though it still doesn't cancel even deeper shadows in the wrinkles. I want to add that stronger highlight onto these parts too. So kind of like that. Some of that shine in here as well, we can go much darker with it, because it's not like pointing exactly at the light, it's more like due to the fact that the reflections are blurry, like rough, it's not uh, chrome, so it's still gonna be reflecting here, but not to the full brightness. And yeah, now let's add that rim light, so I don't want it to go too bright, you had that thing going on, like where it's bright, but it's blending with the yellow background too much. Either go like much brighter than yellow, but that's a bit too much. It's like, what is the nuclear glow in the back of our character? Or we should go like a lot dimmer like this. So it's gonna be noticeably brighter than our dark sides, pun intended. Uh, dark sides of all the surfaces that are facing away from this light and facing over there to get these reflections and not bright enough to actually blend with the background. So before starting painting, like choose a color and compare. Do I get a strong enough contrast? Because we don't want to lose the character, you know, either make the background a lot darker or, you know, or much brighter, but you gotta adapt things. Really don't want to make this yellow brighter so it would blend with the background, so instead I'll probably make all the rest of yellow darker. Maybe a little bit brighter. Yeah, so I would still get some contrast with the blue. Kinda like that. So, uh, yeah, I guess that'll be it. A little highlight on the, on the glass. And I think we're good to go. Hope it was helpful. Quite a revamp. Almost haven't changed anything, uh, except for, like, changing the lighting and applying, you know, brushwork with a bit more of a specific thing. Uh, contact shadows, contact lighting, and yeah, more consistent and stronger lighting from the front, and then the rim light on the side, giving us a much more expressive look, I think. Next patient is Ilva Winters. Hi, Ilva. Hey, Boro. This drawing is a bit of a weird one for me. I like the way it looks, but I couldn't figure out how to put more emphasis on the butterfly she's looking at. I also tried to go for a mix between painterly and more flat methods. I would like it to be more obvious that there is a butterfly in the picture and that's the object of her interest. Thanks for your help again. Well, let's see what we can do. Alright, Elva, let's check it out. The emphasis on the butterfly. I think what we need to do is two things. One, contrast, and two, placement on the canvas. Uh, if the butterfly is important, it needs to be lower, a bit closer to the center. And the contrast, meaning there should be dark background behind the butterfly. So these two things, I think they'll fix the issue. Let's see how we can make it work. I will 
probably move the whole picture lower and actually a bit to the left because I want to have some space to the elbow since this is the action that leads to the important butterfly. So yeah, like this will probably work the best. I don't care too much about the hairs. If anything, for symmetry's sake, it sort of needs to be shorter anyway. <laughs> like this part seems to be longer than this one. And yeah, this way we sort of move the main character a bit to the bottom left, implying that they're not the only main thing in the picture. I think it'll work pretty good in that regard. Let's make the background colder, maybe like this tint a bit, because the hand is a warm green. We need to differentiate from that a bit. And that'll be our background. Uh, it's probably best for me to just start the butterfly over. The shape is fairly simple, but painting around it will be hard. That seems like a more believable shape of an elbow. Yeah, you are going for a more of a flat art style and everything. No problems with that. Uh, I'm not sure if I'll be able to work with that. Like, I'm trying to do the, the whole composition thing or whatever. So, don't pay attention. Like, I'm not fixing your art style. I'm just doing what I can. Interesting, right now you see, as I introduced all the changes I was talking about, even with the butterfly not being visible, it's still the most important thing here. <laughs> So yeah, if you're going for a more of a flat art style, I noticed when I switched to painting with layers and like strong shape design kind of like approach like this, when you just chop in these shapes, then lock the transparency and add shading inside of it. Also with strong brush strokes because you can, because you don't have to work around the same edge even twice, only once you define it and that's it. I found it pretty hard after that switch to not get the flat art style. It was so easy to make these strong, clean shapes that I constantly had to like keep in mind that I need to go back and also add extra polish, extra like three-dimensional details. Because it felt like so clean and finished without any extra details that it's really easy to keep it just flat like that and that's it. So, yeah, I guess that's uh, the best way for you to go. Like, use a lot of layers for all kinds of details like this. Just doing this, you see, it's a very nice way to go about it. It's like a very good blend between it's like being physically appropriate material and kind of three-dimensional with the shadows and everything. But they're like not really following this somewhat cylindrical shape of an object, you know, it's doing its own thing because it's inside of the, like it's masked out by the edges and that's it. So it's a really cool merge between different art styles. And then I'll go ahead and just mask out or erase the stuff that's supposed to cover it up. I don't know how butterflies work. So yeah, that's what's going on. That's how it compares. Could use a few leaves like that, probably. Like that, also like a flat shading like that with big stroke of a big shadow. Maybe add a few like this. So it would be a bit clearer about what that background is. It's just more jungle. So there you go, maybe you want to have like brighter upper part, then I think we can handle some of that brighter color going on at the top like this. I think it still works. Probably this even makes more sense to bring the jungles in front of the thing. So yeah, there we go. 
Next and final patient for today is Mia. Hi Mia. Hi ya Boro. This here's a piece I didn't intend to make. I was painting this to pass time and things were turning out so well I decided to grab some reference and make it the real deal. While I'm pretty proud of it, I continue to struggle with mouths. In fact, I only ever draw the mouth on last after I've rendered everything else. A bad practice, I know, but it really is one of my biggest weaknesses. I suck at pretty much all anatomy as well. Welcome. I also think I didn't do a great job with the perspective on her face. The features look shifted to me, but I can't pinpoint the issue. If you could help me diagnose the problem here, that would be ace. Postscriptum. Here's something you won't be able to unsee. She looks like a handsome Squidward fused with Marilyn Manson. Now it lives in your brain too. Especially in the context of this being a modification of Handsome Squidward. That part really brings these colors to a greater meaning. Let's check it out. Hi, Mia. Well, I spent like almost an hour on your piece and realized I wasn't recording. <laughs> So, I'm not completely done or anything, I started working on the mouth and really you wouldn't see too much of a difference. So, whatever, what am I even doing here, right? <laughs> but yeah, this is looking really trippy, but really what happened was, at first, I moved the canvas to the right a bit and then I selected the eye and moved it to the left and now it's this horrific animation going on. So yeah, you had this one issue with the fact that this eye has a pretty strong distance from the nose bridge, while this one is really smashed close to it, so the distances were pretty off, that was the big issue. At first I thought I wanted to move both eyes a bit to the left, but then I realized it's just about this eye really. So I moved that, let me even do a matchup. A little bit so we would be able to compare better like this right yeah I moved both of the like with the nose together I believe we moved to the left but then also moved this eye even more and yeah overall I was kind of like working on shading the features close to this portrait and I started working on the mouth now trying to make sure I don't change the contrast I know it's your thing <laughs> a lot of people yelled at me in the comments the last time I completely overhauled your contrast game so yeah I'm trying to keep these intact although I don't really know what to do with them and yeah I uh, sort of looked at your original piece and I kind of saw that the lighting is literally hitting from the front, right? So this highlight specifies that it's literally the light is kind of like that, exactly from the camera almost, maybe slightly from the top. Also it really reminded me of this piece I did for Kevin's music album, Found Everspring. And yeah, at first I was painting it exactly the same way, it was also blue skin. And it was also with the lighting from the front, but then with a bunch of iterations and different color corrections and curves and everything, I, it switched to this and I pushed the lighting more to the top. And the main reason to that was because this lighting from the front is really hard to work with. Not that it's hard to make it, you know, to handle it. No, it's not hard. It's hard to make the portrait look nice. <laughs> Because it's literally not a very nice angle for a portrait. There are no good portraits with this angle, I guess. Well, with a lot of exceptions, obviously. But another thing, which also reminded me a lot of that piece, like the um, its middle stage or whatever, the fact that the material of the skin is kind of like metallic. It has a very strong gradient. It gets really dark on the edges. Normally, the skin would you know, not have that strong of a contrast, it would still remain somewhat of a, like, this brightness. But with such a strong gradient, it almost looks like all of it is not... Come on, there we go. That all of it is not being lit, but kind of like softly reflecting the light, which is the way metals work. So it really reminds of that. And I had the same thing and it was like really brutal in terms of, you know, achieving some kind of beauty. But that was with the, that nice and pretty sounding 
music album, it wasn't fitting, but generally, of course, you know, if this is sort of an experimental kind of piece with uh, trying to find non-conventional beauty in this kind of fashion, then totally why not, you know, it can totally be a piece of its own. I can say as much as the original piece is totally, like, I would post that, it looks alright. You know, what I'm doing here is just, you know, you asked <laughs> to change something, I'm changing. But yeah, like, um, that's what I've been talking with me being alone in the room and no recording going on. But let's move on with the mouth. Right now, I'm switching from your kind of a flat curve in here and trying to introduce this um, concave curvature here and convex curvature there. Now, while we have a different angle on the on this face comparing to this one, and this is probably what led to the mistake with the eye being too close in here, because at this angle it makes sense, but at our angle it needs to have more distance there. And so with the mouth we need to uh, make sure we don't go as strong with that for shortening or whatever angle on the mouth. So yeah, I'm trying to just flatten this part a little bit, even if it's curving out, if we would be looking from the front, you know, if the lips look kind of like this. If we're rotating, it will be more curvature here, but less curvature here, and yeah, like that. An important thing also is that we're not necessarily gonna be seeing, you know, just a simple flat corner of a mouth that we're seeing from the front. Uh, these lips are kind of like thick. So what we're seeing, you see underneath the lip, we're seeing like inside of a cheek almost. But again, this angle is too strong. We're gonna be seeing somewhere in between. So a little bit of that inside thing. Also need to do the same kind of foreshortening here. So this angle like this and this one more flat because it's like this at this angle, but getting more vertical and shorter and more horizontal and longer when it's rotated. Also, like, the same situation with a contrast, I would love to add, like, much darker shadow in here, but I'm not sure if it's fitting. It feels like I shouldn't do that, because it would be just another clone of my own art style. And since at least I can work with this brushwork, I think I can make a little effort to maintain the art style in general. Oh, that changed the face a lot. Like all of it together. So yeah, there are different ways to show the bo boniness of the face. Some of it is a bit too much. Like, I saw a certain, like, extreme skinniness of the face, so tried to bring it back a little bit. So yeah, I guess that'll be it. I don't know, I found that, yeah, this fix with the eye was one of the main things that really needed to be done. And yeah, some work on the mouth, but I feel like while I was fixing it, I sort of changed the mouth area so much that it lost a certain cool thing about it that it used to have. Maybe shouldn't go with this strong, uh, whatever this little area is called. I'll never learn what it's called. Generally, I feel like it was just bigger, too. Yeah, there we go. That's a nice little upgrade to the eyelashes, eyebrows area. So yeah, I guess this is it. All right then, this is it. 
Thank you all guys for submitting these pictures, really fun to work with, especially enjoyed the fact that there was only five of them this time. I had a pleasure of spending a bit more time uh, with each one and, uh, you know, really getting somewhere instead of just giving advice and slightly adding some features. So yeah, that was fun. If any of you guys want me to overpaint your pictures like this, the link to my Patreon page is pretty much everywhere, including the end of this video in the description. And that's it. So you become my patron in the overpaint tier, submit the picture with a message, I read the message and overpaint the picture. But for now this is it, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye! <sighs> Don't really have a blooper for ya. How are you been? I'm good, pretty busy though, this is quite a big week. And I really hope to give you guys another cool announcement before the end of this week. But for now, move along with your day.